Did you have a toxic person that raged out at you, that yelled, that screamed, that just came at you, was in your face, maybe was even physical violent? There's a lot of people that have this type of interaction with a narcissist or with a toxic person, but there's some people that never did. There's some people that had a completely different experience with that narcissist or toxic person, and a lot of times that experience was very subtle and very quiet. Today we're going to be talking about some of the aspects of narcissists that have the piece of not yelling, not screaming, but you can still tell that you're getting the silent rage. If you guys are new here, my name is Ben Taylor. I'm a self-aware narcissist on this channel to provide awareness, growth, healing, change, and development. I'm the founder of Raw Motivations, the creator of the NARC app, and your guide in the Escape Toxicity Challenge, which is a small seven-day challenge to start you on your healing journey. Check that out, Escape Toxicity. Dot com. Well, when we talk about this aspect of narcissism, we normally talk about you know people that are dealing with a lot of rage. For me, that was one of the things that I accessed probably the most is rage. It was the easiest emotion. It was typically stemming from aspects of guilt or shame, but oftentimes it would come out as pieces of rage. Of what do I need to do to avoid accountability? What do I need to do to avoid what's actually happening in the moment? So the majority of the time, I would move past it. I would try to distract people. I would get to the place where I'm raging out, I'm yelling, I'm screaming at other people versus actually taking accountability for my actions. So when we talk about narcissism, we typically deal with a lot of narcissists that have a lot of rage. It's just how are you actually seeing it? What does it actually look like? Is it actually out loud or is it quiet? And typically, when we're talking about narcissism and rage, it also goes into this aspect of when it's silent and it's quiet, we're typically talking about vulnerable or covert narcissism. Now, vulnerable or covert is the same thing as an overt, a grandiose narcissist, but different. It's important for people to be able to understand that. Like, we're not looking at two different, completely different things. We're looking at the same thing molded out in two different models. One person, an overt, might be raging and screaming at you. The covert might be giving you silent treatment or doing a belittling or passive aggressive or punishing you. They're both the same thing, but they're channeled in two different ways. Sometimes people get that confused. When we're talking about covert narcissists, we're still talking about the same stuff. A lack of empathy, a grandiosity, need for admiration, all, all the different things that you're going to have in regular narcissism per se, but... Unlike the overts, coverts are normally going to appear more introverting, uh, more introverted, more self-effacing, like more putting themselves down. Like they're going to be more of the humble ones, the shy ones. Sometimes it's the people that say, hey, I don't like the drama. I don't want to be in the drama, but they're in the drama. Like they're the center of the drama. Typically, you're going to see a vulnerable or a covert narcissist be more on the victim side. Of like, oh, I'm a victim. Like, it's, 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 no, don't pay attention to me. Like, I'm the one that got hurt. Like, all this kind of stuff will happen. For me, I was more of the victim side. Overt, more in the workplace. Covert, regular life. I was the victim in the relationships. People left me. Like, I was loyal to them, but they left me. Making a victim story that I would tell other people. That I would connect with someone else because I'm like, Man, I'm so glad we can finally connect now because the last person like didn't want to connect with me in this way. They didn't actually understand what was going on in this regard. And so a lot of times when we deal with narcissists, we deal with this aspect of them being covert, of them being a play to be able to manipulate and get you off kilter because they're not actually yelling and raging at you, but it's more quiet. It's more silent. So we're talking about this aspect of covert narcissists. We're still talking about the aspect of superiority, entitlement, but oftentimes they're going to have different expressions of that. With lacking empathy, with different manipulation, they're normally doing this, but it is in a subtle way. So when we're talking about this aspect of the silent rage, I need to be able to bring this kind of into, into perspective here when we're talking about silent rage. Both narcissists are dealing with rage. It's just how is it actually coming out? How is it actually shown? Well, silent rage is a form of emotional abuse in which the narcissist uses silence and withdrawal to punish and control the victim. Oftentimes, you're going to hear about this from the passive-aggressive comments to the idea of giving the silent treatment. Now, I want to be able to clarify the difference between silent treatment and no contact. No contact is an intentional thing on the survivor's side to be able to protect them from being in a toxic relationship. 
The silent treatment is a manipulation tool from the narcissist to be able to control you and to be able to tell you, hey, it is your fault. Did you ever have a narcissist where he is in your life and he's telling you different things and all of a sudden he goes completely silent and you're just left like wondering and thinking like, what did I do? What actually happened? Like what transpired? And all of this starts to happen and like confuse and frustrate and things like that because you're like, I must have done something wrong. Like there must be something that I did. And then you finally get to the place that you go back to this toxic person and he doesn't communicate. He doesn't tell you anything because he's waiting for you to grovel and come back to him and be like, I'm sorry I did something wrong. Okay, well, we'll work on that. We'll work on your issues. We'll work on the frustration. And so with that, you have a narcissist that will actually leverage the silent treatment to manipulate, to get you to start to apologize for stuff that you've never had to apologize for before. Look at you to stop acting a certain way by just giving you the silent treatment. Sometimes with this aspect, they'll stonewall you. They'll just put up a wall like, I'm not going to talk to you anymore. Like oftentimes looking like the silent treatment. There'll be aspects of sulking of where like they're sitting alone in the corner being like, woe is me. Like this victim mentality of like, I can't believe you did that. And you're like, what did I even do? And you're left confused wondering what's actually going on. This is where you also get the ignoring piece of where a narcissist is ignoring you and not willing to identify that you even exist. This is going to be incredibly confusing and even on the lines of gaslighting you in your own house of walking by you, acting like you don't exist when you're asking questions, when you're asking and working, trying to work things out and they're not willing to even talk to you. This is where we also see a lot of the belittling and the passive aggressive behavior. I feel like something's wrong. No, there's not anything wrong, but the digs that they make start to chip away at you. Like, wait a second, like this actually hurts. But when you bring that up, they're told, they tell you not to be so oversensitive, not to be so controlling, overbearing. Like, why can't you just take a joke? Like, there's all these different pieces that are going into it to confuse you in what's actually happening. Well, in dealing with this aspect of silent rage, like I mentioned, it's used to be able to control and manipulate you. It's used as a way, as a tactic to be able to maintain and get back in control of the relationship. When a narcissist takes and withholds communication, withholds affection, with, withholds intimacy, the narcissist ends up making you feel like you're guilty and you're responsible for their emotional state. When people start to think this, they start to believe that they're responsible for how that person feels, how that person acts, how that person responds, and ultimately gets to the place where you start to blame yourself for their actions towards you. It is a process that all of a sudden you wind up being like, man, I'm sorry that you hit me. Like, I'm sorry that you yelled at me because of something I did. Like, it starts to get back to the place where you're apologizing for their actions and for their issues. Well, what are some things that you need to do to be able to work on this? Well, first thing is understanding like what is actually happening with the silent treatment that it is meant to manipulate and to control you. The first step is understanding, hey, this is a game. A game that the other person is playing saying, hey, I want to be able to control you by doing this. So as soon as you accept it, you can be like, hey, I'm not taking the blame for something that I didn't do. I'm not accepting something that I didn't do. Instead, you start to take a look at, hey, silent treatment. Let me go on a day for myself. Let me go work on myself. Let me go focus on my journaling, my meditation. Now I have extra time to work on me. Like That's how you have to spin it for a little bit, at least until you can get out of the relationship. Making sure that you actually set and enforce boundaries, not just with the narcissist of like, hey, like I'm not going to accept that, but also in your own mind of understanding, wait a second, like what, what that is, is someone projecting something onto me. He's trying to put a, a pain on an idea and a thought and a limit on me as far as like what I did when I didn't even do that. Like so many times we'll see the silent treatment and rage and things like that come out and they're trying to punish you for something that you didn't even do. But because it seems so confusing, because it keeps going back and forth, you're like, wait a second, maybe I did this. And then I would encourage you to be able to seek support, whether that's a therapist, whether that's a coach, and just whether that's community, to get with other people to understand, hey, I need to understand and I need to figure out what I'm actually dealing with and how to be able to work through this. Before I forget, I'd, I'd like to mention like the NARC app. You can go to narcapp.com, N-A-R-C-A-P-P, narcapp.com to be able to get involved in a narcissistic abuse recovery community. And with those people, you can connect on a weekly basis with other survivors all across the globe. You can start to build friendships, build relationships there of understanding, hey, I'm not alone. 
Like I'm actually able to have other people that tell me, hey, what you just went through, that was crazy making. Now you can get free. Now you can understand. The other last thing I would be able to say is this idea of developing self-care strategies and coping with the crazy making that's going to get put on you. Because the silent rage, like putting you down, the passive aggressive, all these different pieces are going to be there to try to convince you of something that's happening, try to convince you of something that's going on that's not actually there as a way to manipulate and control. But when you start putting in self-care strategies of like, hey, let me go ahead and make sure I'm seeking support from others, I'm practicing mindfulness, I'm journaling, I'm writing stuff down to ground myself in the truth, you get less pulled away from this idea of the other person controlling and manipulating you. So in dealing with some of this aspect of covert narcissism, of silent rage, it can be really, really confusing and challenging. But I want to encourage you to recognize behavior, understand by setting boundaries, start to ground yourself in journaling and understanding what's going on and reach out for help. If you're confused, if you're struggling in this toxic relationship, I'd like to invite you to go to escapetoxicity.com. It's a small seven day challenge that we put together just to start you down that road of healing. So one of the stages in our healing process, working with us with raw motivations to help get you to the place where you're happy, healed, healthy, and whole. Check it out, escapetoxicity.com. 